Well, for what is supposed to be a quiet week in the NFL offseason, the Denver Broncos certainly got a bunch of news that we have to break down today. We got new information about our uniform launch here in a couple of days. Got information about uh, players that we've done pre-draft visits with. And we saw just a crazy stark juxtaposition between Russell Wilson and our current quarterback, Jarrett Stidham. We're going to break all that down and so much more in this video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ben. I'm a diehard Denver Broncos fan, and I'm excited to take us through the NFL draft all the way through getting back to the playoffs. Uh, and I think that might come faster than a lot of us think. So let's dive into the news of the day. News of the day is that Tom Pelissero, very plugged in, um, works for NFL Network, said that the league today told people for the very first time uh, that uh, they are able to add a third helmet that is starting just with the teams that are uh, refreshing their uniforms this offseason, which is us, the Tennessee, nope, the Houston Texans, the New York Jets, and I believe that is it. Those three teams all will have three helmets in their arsenal. Prior to this, you only were able to have your helmet and a color rush alternate. You, there's two helmets, and uh, according to the league memo that went out today, right here, that you are able to have your uh, your normal helmet, your which is called your classic, your alternate, and or a color rush helmet. So we had heard a lot uh, about this new Broncos uniform. We know that it's going to be the same uh, horse head that we have had for since the 1997 refresh under Pat Bolin. Uh, and we had, had heard that it was going to be an all-white helmet all the time. I think now that this is thrown in there that you have a third helmet, uh, I see a uh, probably a blue helmet in that mix. Uh, you could see a possibility, like, could there be a black version of this? We saw some of the stuff coming out from uh, Broncos Twitter had uh, black in some of the um, color pattern. We see the, um, the NFL draft hat for the Denver Broncos has a, a black version to it or a black tone to it. So be really interesting to see that. I'm excited that we're going to have three helmet options. Uh, that just gives a lot more versatility to what we have. And I'm pumped that we'll be one of three or four teams that have three helmets in our arsenal. So that's really exciting. Uh, next thing I wanted to break down today that was uh, just really interesting was the crazy juxtaposition we saw between uh, the guy who is supposedly lining up under quarterback right now, according to Sean Payton, depending on what we do in the NFL draft, Jarrett Stidham, you just see a crazy difference between him and Russell Wilson uh, and how they're appearing and just, uh, I don't want to throw Russell Wilson under the bus. I know that will just blow up our comments uh, with hate, but I just, I'll throw these up here and, and let y'all uh, make whatever judgments you want to. No, I'm going to make some judgments. Uh, so we see Russell Wilson come on, and the headline here is that playing for Mike Tomlin is one of the greatest gifts in the entire world, he said. Uh, he did a full-on interview in the magazine Essence, and then he went on and he didn't retweet like the article. Instead, he retweeted like his glamour shots. And so as you think of being like, you know, just a yoked NFL lineman, which one of these dudes are you most excited to block for if you're uh, that running back fighting for that extra yard or that running or that wide receiver just fighting for your quarterback? Like which one of these quarterbacks are you like truly getting behind and you want to hang with? We know famously from his time in Seattle, Russell Wilson didn't even give his cell phone number to a lot of people. Marshawn Lynch came out and said that, that if you wanted to hang out with Russell Wilson, you contacted his people and then he reached out to you. Uh, that's just not the kind of vibe, like the leader vibe um, that you want. So then you see him retweeting these pictures with some uh, some heart emojis and you're just like, he might have more makeup on in this picture than Caleb Williams. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, looking, He does look good there. He looks pretty swole. Uh, but so you see this um, being like what he's putting out there on Twitter and, you know, his, his comments that he's putting out. And I just saw just a crazy juxtaposition between that and what Jarrett Sidham did. Uh, Jarrett Sidham went on to Meat Church Barbecue, which I'm going to have to get me some of that because the burger he makes here looks so good. Um, like a smash burger on a Traeger looks phenomenal. Uh, and, and what's interesting here is like, I watched this entire thing and hearing multiple times, the host of this show says, you're the quarterback for the Denver Broncos. You're the quarterback for the Denver Broncos, not you're a backup quarterback or you're in the quarterback room, but just kind of refers to him as the quarterback for the Denver Broncos. And he never balks at it. And so that really makes me wonder what the Denver Broncos plans are. We know that, uh, his backup 
quarterback contract was bigger than uh, most backups in the NFL. We've seen Sean Payton say, like, I think he can be a starting guy. Even when Russell Wilson was benched, it wasn't because of the contract, according to Sean Payton. It was, we think this is going to give us the juice that we need to win. Uh, and then, yeah, here's him like being referred to as the quarterback for the Broncos and just like watching his reaction here makes me feel like, oh, that's how he views himself. And now you're the quarterback of the Denver Broncos. Which, by the way, talk about hospitality. Yeah, I mean. So, I mean, just that's cool. But I, I just look at, I mean, you look at his his swag, his presence, just even the way he interacts with this guy, uh, the host of this, he just seems like the kind of dude you want to, uh, hang out with. Uh, we remember George W. Bush maybe won the presidency because everyone said he's the kind of guy you could have a beer with. And I think you can't underestimate like the the chill vibes that Jared Stidham gives off. And I, I think that's a, a pretty big juxtaposition there. Last thing I wanted to go through here, uh, have a community post out there breaking down what you, my, uh, you know, people sub to this channel and fans of the Denver Broncos, what do you want the Denver Broncos to do with that 12th overall draft pick? And what was really interesting to me was just seeing that the uh, smallest percentage of you want us to take the best available player at 12. It seems like that is kind of Sean Payton's MO. We broke down in a video pr prior how when Sean Payton had the opportunity to draft a Matt Leinart, to draft a Vince Young, to draft a Jay Cutler. Instead, he drafts Reggie Bush, the best player on the board at two. And so it, it would seem that given his MO, that might be the most likely scenario is that, that he drafts the best player available at 12. But most of you are saying that that is not what you want. I uh, love Reed T. Cole here. Wow, taking the best available player has the least votes, LOL. Uh, and then I, I like this one here. Draft another bust under a coach. Um, I'll take the best player available. Thank you. We're going to need him. Um, oh, wow. Okay, I just read the whole thing. That's kind of a hater comment. We're not going to give that any more credence there. But uh, looking here now at uh, who the Denver Broncos have brought in for uh, different pre-draft visits. We get uh, 12 or we get 30 of these pre-draft visits. And, and those are you get 30 players that you can bring in from out of state. There's a little bit of a loophole where if they're within driving distance, you can have more than that, which gives teams like San Francisco or, or teams in Texas like a, a pretty big advantage. But here are the players uh, that we have brought in so far for different private meetings um, or had different private meetings when we go to them. So we know the J.J. McCarthy private meeting, we went to him and and famously did that uh four-hour meeting with him and Sean Payton. One of the things to, that'll be really interesting to see as we go on is that teams strategically will not do private meetings with a player that they think they can trick folks into hoping no one knows that we're interested and hoping that we'll fall to them. So sometimes you, you bring a player in for those pre-draft meetings to kind of tip your hand and make people think, oh, well, we better move up and get Michael Penix because we know the Broncos are going to get him at 12 if he's if he's still on the board. And by doing so, maybe the player that Sean Payton really wants will fall to us. So we are definitely going to keep a very close eye on what happens and who else the Denver Broncos bring in for private meetings. But uh, very excited to get to the draft 15 days away. I am very excited for our draft plans. We are going to live stream the entire draft. I got a couple friends coming into the the small crowded basement studio and we'll make a room here for them. Uh, we're going to react with all of y'all in the comments and I can't wait for that. And then we're going to have a couple of my folks and friends in Denver who will bring in closer to the Denver Broncos pick. Thanks so much for riding with me in Broncos country. Let's giddy up. Ah, I thought I was going to have three days in a row.